going on, everybody? You're listening to another episode of Loud About Nothing. It's me, your boy, the freaking hottest dude in the podcast game, Sebastian Canelli. And as always, per usual, we got the cute boy here himself, Robbie Boy. Robbie, say hello to the beautiful What's people. What's going on, beautiful people? He's here. He is here. I'm here. I'm, I'm very Made excited. it through January. Almost, right? Yes. Tomorrow will be January 31st. How many beers did you have this month, Robbie? I don't know. Less than 10. Less than 10, right? I had three beers this month. Pretty dry. Pretty dry. Three beers all month, which I think is really good. Yeah. I think that's a really good stat. I mean, I had a lot of tequila sodas. <laughs> oh, what the fuck are you doing? How dare you? That's it. What am I, the I mean, doctor? I had what are you trying to trick beers. me? No, I mean, I had less than 10 beers, but oh, in, yeah, in yeah. Park City, I had a lot of tequila sodas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had three beers. 12, 12 eight balls. What do what, what, what no. you do? What's yeah. the trick? You no, no trick. Me? I had I had I had a lot of tequila. So oh, uh, okay. They were okay. free. You know, there's this thing in Canada now um, that you're only supposed to. The doctors came out. You're only supposed to have two beers a week. Oh wow! Give up drinking. At that point, yeah. Don't even drink. Yes. Also, I like. How it's only specific to Canada. <laughs> the Canadian, yes. Over, we only need two beers a week. No, be in Americans Canada. Americans need more. In, I heard a lot of Canadians are having two beers in Canada, jumping the border, coming uh, over, drinking 12, going back. Okay. Two beers a week. There's no point to even drink at that point. Probably not, no. Because you, what are you going to catch? Be like, oh, I'm starting to feel good. Yeah, if anything... And now if you're drinking I feel to, nothing. Yeah. If you're drinking to accomplish something, you're probably only complicating it more with the two beer situation. And people would say that you I have a bad relationship with beers then. Sure. 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 I got a bad relationship. Or you just like being drunk. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, if you go out to loosen up, to talk to more people, or you want to dance or anything like that, then two beers might not do the trick. Two beers. What you might just be more in your head at that point. Imagine how embarrassed I would be so... Like, you're just making everything a tiny bit worse. At least there's a point where after a few beers that you're like, all right, this will turn around and it'll get more fun and it'll be really bad tomorrow. Whereas yeah. two beers is just like, the morning won't be great, the night won't be great, like everything won't be great. won't be horrible, but it won't be great. So at that point, just like, don't do anything. This is... Yeah, it's wild. This is it. They don't want us to live free. The doctors of Canada. The doctors of Canada are don't want us to live this free. You fucking doctors I'll, I'll, in Canada. I'll you know you these this. doctors told me there's only <laughs> fucking socialism, bro. I only have two beers. You know how fuck. So Canada has free <laughs> universal health care, right? Okay. And they they're trying to like make keep people healthy. Two beers. Two beers in Canada. For sure, definitely. The U.S., they're like, yo, we get paid for fucking when people are sick. Drink all the beers you want, babe. Oh, yeah. Like, babe, all the beers you want, okay? We're going to put it on TV. We're going to advertise it. We're going to do two-for-one specials. You pay for the fucking medical bills. Yeah. Canada's like, the medical bills are getting out of hand. Two, bi two beers. That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's it. That's what's happening. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, I'm looking at Canada for like... For those tips now. Okay. I'm looking for places that, like, they have stock. Somewhat of the, your interest. They have or the, stock. Their in is your interest, correct. Oh, my God, listen. M&M's being like, if you don't eat 12 M&M's a day, you're going to die. Of course you want yeah, me to yeah. eat M&M's, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's yeah. beneficial to you. Yeah. Right? There's nothing like, oh, I own a car washing place. You know what I want you to do? Go get your car dirty, right? That's yeah, basically yeah. what U.S. healthcare is. Yes. All right. I'm sorry. I digress. I digress. We have shit to talk about. Um... Yeah, we have a lot of stuff. All right, all, all, all my babies, all, all these babies out there, I got something to tell you. Valentine's Day is coming up. Okay. V-Day. February is here. Oh, yes. Valentine's Day is upon us. Valentine's Day is upon us. I'm not going to talk about relationship stuff today. I'm not I gonna know. I had so love. much to talk about with love and relationships, especially. It's like none of it. None of it today. None of it. I mean, it's not relevant. It's not happening no, in your life. No, right now. no, 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 no. He was like, I want to talk about crushes. I go, oh, you got a crush on somebody? He goes, no. <laughs> I go, so what are we going to just talk about the idea of you? Yeah, not a I crush? had thoughts on crushes. Who knows? I might have a crush. I mean, everybody has a crush all the time. That's um, not true. Uh, anyways, we were going to. I will. <laughs> That's so We're not having true. Uh, Valentine's Day. People have Day. crushes on themselves sometimes. Sure. To have a crush on yourself. 
Oh, well, I thought we're not doing crush talk. No, but that's the I want to do crush talk. We're not allowed to do crush talk. Okay. We're saving it to Valentine's I Day. I, I thought. Babe. Okay, so then we can we do the <laughs> listen, crush talk? Listen to me. No, no, no. Because I have a whole crush talk. No, we're not doing crush talk. I have talk. a whole spiel about crushes. We're not doing and crush talk. Either, whether my own or other people's or my observations, I have been observing more recently. I've had crushes on so many people. I love but, crushes. But the one I knew that we would have a good conversation around the crushes. One person, the one person I want to have a crush on. Is myself and why the fuck can't that work out? Why am I playing hard to get? You can't with have me? a crush on yourself. Why am I playing? Hard I don't to think get you can me? have a. Cr- I think you can love yourself. I think crush in flies like butterflies almost. And if you are having butterflies and getting butterflies in the mirror, then you are psychotic. I want to be like I can't believe I'm spending time with me. No, I don't even I know if that. that. I have a whole spiel on crushes. We're gonna save because I'm not allowed to do it this week. Anyways, <laughs> please call in for Valentine's Day. We're doing a Valentine's Day episode and a Valentine's Day call in episode, so we're saving the love talk. We're tabling it one week. We're tabling. I said, yeah, let's save the love talk. Uh, yeah, but call in with some Valentine's Day stuff. Uh, let us know what do you think the perfect Valentine's Day event is. Like, where do you go? What what's the uh, what yeah. do you need? Do you have any stories of of past great Valentine's Day, past bad, bad Valentine's Day? Do you shoot your shot on Valentine's Day? Is that a day that yeah. you should go uh, like be like I hey, I like you by the way right any date talks any crush if you have a crush call in about the crush we would love to talk about the crushes that you guys have uh or yeah d- dates first dates that go well first dates that go bad Valentine's days of past that went well or bad um literally any love adjacent or st- relationship based uh stories or questions bring them in for Valentine's Day if you're single we love talking about being single. Uh, and then we have some shows coming up. Yes. Uh, we have shows on, uh, we have a show 217, 218 in Vermont. That's President's Day weekend. We will be in Vermont. So we'll be teaching. Uh, Robbie will be teaching a class on how to take podcast stuff and put that shit online, how to help grow uh, your podcast stuff. So that's going to be pretty cool. I'm teaching my normal improv bullshit. Um, 224. And Shannon O'Neill will also be teaching there. Shannon It'll be O'Neal. us and Shannon O'Neill doing shows and then teaching workshops, which she's excited about. Uh, 224. We're doing New York is Phenomenal. We're back in New York City at Caveat. That's Friday, 224 at 930. Yes, uh, so- that's the first time that Sebastian and I will have been hosted a show in New York City since the uh christmas show which was over two months ago so please come out to that it's a great way you can support the podcast and support yeah everything that we do is coming out in person beautiful and then this friday if you're yeah, listening we to have this exciting um, news about this friday this friday uh we have a show two three at the bitter end which is uh a real i'm i'm excited for this robbie um because um some people know I've talked about this on the podcast. So, so the Bitter End's like a dope club that's been in New York for years and uh, years. Some great comedy people have gone through, great music people have gone through, and we always have like a, a special guest at our show that we talk to. And uh, I'm going to uh, have my father come and be the special guest, which is because my dad was a musician in the '70s in New York City. Uh, and that was a place that he would play. So I, uh, he's going to come and we're going to talk to him and he might play a little song for us at the end, which is something I'm very excited for and nervous about. Interesting. I'm nervous because the last time like I cried hard was when my dad sang at my sister's wedding. Oh, you think you might cry? <sighs> I mean, I'm excited to see. I, your dad's great. Um, I, the last time I, my, hearing my father sing, literally fucking guts me it guts me it, it hits me in a spot like i can't oh, describe shit. Uh, i don't imagine you imagine no, you love your beautiful. dad and like yeah, you, yeah. you have you you have your words with each other right but to hear him just express emotion that's to hear a nice. father just express emotion and that's what music is yeah oh jesus christ if i'm like i'm uh, call me seattle because i'm fucking wet baby okay <laughs> What was that? That's I thought you were gonna say because I'm sleepless, but oh no, I'm like you're soaked. I can't. Oh, be easy, bro. <laughs> like just to think about my my dad say I can't even look at him. If you come to the show and he sings, like you'll see, I won't even be able to fucking look at. I'll like literally my body will be removed from the plane because I can't handle the existence so much. There's two moments where I dissociate in life. Oh wow, when I'm fucking. Because I want to last longer, and when my dad is playing and singing the guitar, because I don't want to sob like a child. Okay. These are the two moments I dissociate. I'm getting the shit kicked out of me. I'm present, okay. right? 
<laughs> right? I'm getting I'm getting my ear pierced. I am there, okay? Okay. It's, people are making fun of me. I'm bombing on stage. I feel it. My father pulls out a guitar. I have never been further away from planet Earth. Wow. I You will see my eyes glaze over, and they will just be full of tears, and I won't even be present. That's beautiful. I mean, I can he's definitely handle. a charmer. I cannot you handle You wouldn't exist without, without his charm. Didn't your mom find, like meet him? He performed. That's the first time she saw him yeah. while he was performing. Yeah, yeah. He's so this is all comes down. This it must be. Not, I'm excited what to you see your my dad. dad's gonna get lucky. No, <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> you, well, you I'm saying you don't box. exist without like that's like your parents' origin love story, which is cute. Is like him performing, wow. and and that so it would make sense that it cro- you would it would bring tears to you. You're right. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to handle all. Uh, which is cool. I'm it's, I'm excited. He's told me stories briefly about when he used to perform in the city, and they were very interesting. And I'm excited to hear him talk about that. And it's cool that we'll be playing at a spot that's still around, and like that he was there. And, um, uh, it, it's yeah, it's yeah. I'm I'm just nervous. I'm gonna cry on stage. I have never fucking cried on stage. I've so then never, get off the stage while he plays I've the guitar. Never cried on stage. We could watch him play the guitar from the audience. I'm scared. You know what? How much? Um, here's worst case scenario for the show Friday. Come worst case scenario. Please come to the show. Also, there'll be two musicians that are playing after us that are awesome, and I'm it's gonna, gonna be. Cry. I'm not gonna cry for that. Show. No, of course. <laughs> but it's gonna be a nice, different night than what we're used to doing. I literally am scared that I'm going to have. I'm gonna just be on stage. My parents never see me perform. They come see me perform, and the thing that's most memorable is me crying to my daddy. <laughs> it's me crying to daddy. That might be what happens. I swear to God, if I if people from the podcast come out and the first time they see me live, I'm crying looking at my dad, <laughs> I want to fucking die. I, I don't know why I put myself in a corner like All that. All right, so the, yeah, yeah, yeah. They could watch from the I, green room. I'm a beat catcher, but I'm allergic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm scared, yeah. bro. Yeah. I'm gonna, yo. I gotta. Uh, also, he's not gonna be. It's different at your sister's wedding than what, unless he knows what he. he unless he's gonna turn it on. <laughs> he turns it on. He'll turn it on. What are you kidding me? Yeah. He's, I mean, I'm excited. He's yeah. I mean, he's like if Ser- Serpico had fucking charm. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's the most New York reference I could ever <laughs> drop. Um. Yeah, but it'll be good, and I'm really excited because um. What I'm actually excited about with this stuff is, um, like, my dad gets to give to me, and, like, I feel like I'm actually getting to give him a memory, too. Yeah, that is nice. Uh, Yeah, between us going away together and this, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm actually, like, I feel like this is the first time in my life I'm able to provide my dad with some, like, so, like oh, my son's giving me good memories. Yeah. Because there was a lot of years I didn't give him good memories, right? Or he would give you the memories. Or he, a yeah, lot he, of parents are the memory suppliers. Of course. Or they're setting, they're saying, oh, play soccer. And then they watch me play. Yeah, play yeah. basketball, you know? like, And I'm kind of being like, hey, I'm giving you, like, come do this with me so you have this memory. Yeah, yeah. And so I have this memory of you, too. Yeah. And because he got to play there. And, I, and he probably wouldn't. He, my dad doesn't fucking play in public anymore, really. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like probably like he gets to revisit an old time in his life. And I get to be there, a part of it. I never thought I'd be able to give to my dad like that. Yeah, that is really cool. I'm not paying him for the show. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you fucking dare ask for a dollar. I'm giving you a memory, dad. Okay? Don't you dare. If my father comes to me with, with a hat. Now, if my dad comes to me, hey, pretty good show, wiggling yeah. his hat, get the fuck out of it. Dad, I'm giving you a memory, not a dollar. <laughs> Other performers will pay. Yes. You, Dad, not a fucking dollar, okay? <laughs> I'm giving you a memory. What's better than that? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm very excited. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be good. We'll see. I hope it's good. I, was thinking is, about, I hope it's good. I mean, I hope it's good. I, I want to honor your dad in a good way. Yeah, dude, don't fuck up. Uh, I, know. I hope it's good. I was like thinking about it. I didn't realize it. you were nervous. That's not great. But hey, fuck it. It'll no, be I'll good. be fine. It'll Comedy be very wise, good. I'll be yeah, fine. it'll be good. I'm not worried about comedy. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm as funny as I am. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm worried about the cries. I was actually thinking, you know how like dudes jerk off before a date? Yeah. I was like, should I cry before the show? Uh, <laughs> should I like? I was like thinking like, like because you have shit on Thursday. I was like, maybe I'll do a, a Thursday cry sesh. Okay. Like bust, get it all out. Bust out the lotion and tissues, but for the skin and the <laughs> eyes, you know. I was thinking to pregame with a cry. If yes. I'm gonna cry on Friday, I might as well hit it with a cry on Thursday. 
That's not a bad idea at all. So then at least I'm in more control of a cry. Yeah. Because you ever see a man cry that hasn't cried for like months? Yeah. Yeah. It's uncontrollable. It is insane. I'm like a once per year crier maybe and it's uncontrollable. It's uncontrollable. Because you just, it's weird. Yeah. Everything gets let out of that has been manifesting. Bro, I'm going to be crying like a virgin. Yeah. I, I need to... I need to let some let the ducks loose. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe you do that. I mean, I don't know how much it will help. I don't know either, right? But yeah. it's just like uh, maybe let me touch that emotion. It's better than touch that emotion before that emotion's touching me. Correct. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna look at. But I was thinking on Thursday, I'll fucking close the door to my room and fucking really just fucking let the tears out. So I'm ready to cry on Friday. <laughs> and you guys will watch from a different area. Nah, dude. You want to stand on stage? Of course. If I'm going to cry. Are you going to bite your lip and hold it back? Or are you just going to let it out? Uh, you'll I've see. never seen you ball cry. you never seen me cry cry. Yeah, I've never seen you. I've never seen a tear, tear leave my eye. I don't think so. Exactly. I almost cried on the way here today. You did. Yeah. <laughs> So I got to get something ready. I I yeah, got to I got to do something, something ready. ready, right? Um like dudes dudes we we're we're emotional, you know? Definitely. We just hide we hide it in in this different toxic kind of like refusal to admit that we are emotional way. Correct. Like I'll get these these videos online. Oh yeah, you sent me this video. I sent you this video. What time did I send you this video? Um I don't know. If it was during the middle after of the midnight? Day. Yeah, after midnight those videos are allowed. I'm not allowed to send anything after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm talking about crushes. I'm not allowed to send anything after midnight. I, but I do, I do agree with rule. you. I don't like the yeah. I don't want to. Men are extremely dramatic, and we like to pretend that we're not, and we express it in ways that we view, I guess, as masculine. But in it only reads as more dramatic. What's the you video? sent this video? Sebastian sends me this video because I had talked about not being able to cry on the plane last week, presumably. Sebastian sends me this video. Which in the back is just Cillian Murphy smoking a cigarette. Cillian Murphy has oh, is men adore this guy. Oh, I don't know men. what it is. He's very good looking. He has blue eyes. Men, my white men, I guess, adore this man. White men, they this, love Cillian Murphy. This he is makes the them feel of yes. like how man, how masculine men could feel. You yes. know, if he's if, if Cillian Murphy's involved, men are like, all right, I can I can feel some emotion. That's that's <laughs> our level of like we could open up for him. Yeah, and then close it back yes, down. Yes, yes. Here with the Peaky Blinders, <laughs> you gotta understand, tears are okay when your mother dies. <laughs> so Sebastian sends me this Cillian Murphy video, and it says. A man will only cry like this for one woman in his lifetime. After that, his soul will never allow him to truly fall in love again. And I'm like, all right, I guess this is related to what? Very dramatic. There's slow Cillian Murphy exhaling a cigarette. Extremely dramatic. And I'm like, all right, I guess I wasn't able to cry on the plane. And this is why he thinks this is relatable to me. And I write back. I'm like, this is just No Tears Left to Cry by Ariana Grande. No Tears Left to Cry is less dramatic than this slow-mo video of Cillian Murphy smoking a cigarette. A man will only cry like this for one woman in his lifetime. After that, his soul will never allow him to truly fall in love again. And 239,000 likes. Every single 1,600 comments. Oh, all men. Every one of them a union worker. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's just like... And yeah, then bro. Ariana Grande is all. I mean, at, Ariana Grande is tougher than this, boys. I hate to break it to you. I can't believe it. I it's got no so... tears left to cry. Uh, that's fun and uplifting. <laughs> this is so much more dramatic. I can't believe I sent that. <laughs> it's actually so embarrassing that, one, I have these feelings, and two, I share them. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I thought it was for me. It was for you. You think? Oh also, no, 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 no! Never mind. I never thought mind. you were talking about me because yeah, I yeah, couldn't it's cry. About you. It's about you. Yeah, a yeah, man yeah. will only cry like this for one woman in his lifetime. After that, his soul will never allow him to truly fall in love again. Yeah, just give me Ariana Grande next time. Um, yeah, a hundred percent. I don't need all. Of, this was too dramatic. Oh, yeah. Well, men are men, men are, are so dramatic. Men. They don't allow themselves to feel drama unless Cillian Murphy is present. And it's like, guys, you could feel drama without Cillian Murphy. I need the Peaky Blinders. You need the Peaky Blinders. Without the Peaky Blinders, I can't cry. Yeah. <laughs> By order of the Peaky Blinders, I allow tears in this home. 
<laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. You know, it's crazy. I see something like that and I go, preach. Pre- I mean, you're <laughs> what? Yeah. I see that and I go, preach. But if someone would put on like, like some stupid ass, like, like a uh, love song that uh, like no tears left to cry. Do you feel anything from that? I, d- I got you no know, tears I, left to cry. I that's not how it goes. Why when you sing are you all shoulders? You are actually very bad at at communicating a song. This is doing nothing. This isn't doing anything. This is doing nothing. I'm doing a good job, I think. You're just moving your shoulders and and do. I think people know the. Maybe I'm terrible at it. I'll play it. We can't. We'll I can't get, play we'll it. We'll get taken down. I'm doing a decent job. You're doing a bad job. I think I'm doing a decent job. What? You're all shoulders with with, with the song. What? I'm you shoulders all? a lot when I dance, I guess. Are you shoulders when you dance? I think I'm a little bit shoulders, yeah. Like above average, I guess. That's your move. You move. You, you wiggle, wiggle. Shoulders... I don't know what yeah, my how moves do you dance? are. Did you ever practice dancing as a kid? No. To like, be like, let me figure out how to get better at this. I liked dancing as a kid. Apparently, there are a lot of videos of me dancing in front of a television screen as a child. But I mean, like, as a, but like I a, was never consciously practicing for the intent of other people liking this more than they previously had. Yeah. Um, I wasn't like trying to get better. Who'd you catch these shoulder moves from? I don't know. I think at a certain point, I went to a lot of Sweet Sixteens. That's kind of when you have to re. You're, that's like when you're dancing in front of your peers again, I would say, for the first time. That's, like that's the year where you have, I had maybe 15 Sweet 16s I had to go to. Yeah, because sometimes that bat mitzvah, bar mitzvah age is a little too young. Oh, yeah. I you didn't, could hang back I didn't go to mitzvah. a lot of bar I think I went to one bar mitzvah. Uh, um, um, but, yeah, the Sweet 16, you're at an age. That was when it's like, all right, we got to dance in front of the girls we like Yeah. for the first time. Do people bring dates to Sweet 16s? No, I don't think I would ever got a plus one. No. Everybody would that just, would you would get insanity. invited. I'm sure there are Sweet 16s that people are getting plus ones to. Wow. But you would just, everybody in the class, it was like, I was in the honors classes and a lot of the Sweet 16s were just a lot of the honors kids. So it was like, the we all you took classes. To. The ones you went to. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones I went to, yeah. yeah so it's like, like a lot kids of the kids. Weren't, weren't allowed Sweet 16. No, no. I mean, everybody, no, I wouldn't also call them dumb you if they weren't in dumb. the honors classes. No, I mean, I... No, I think all that shit's bullshit. You could get put into a... It's like whether or not your seventh grade teacher likes you sets you up of whether or not you're going to be able to take AP calculus in six years. It's like, all right, that all that shit is kind of bullshit. It's whether your seventh grade teacher likes your parents also. Yeah. Which it's so All that wild. shit is like, yeah, not great. If you're advocating for yourself, I mean, it's fucked up. But I mean, whatever. Teachers are great. Love teachers. But... We go to the Sweet 16s. That's the first time I'm dancing. And I know a lot of lyrics to songs. So I would kind of just be like, all right, my move is I'm going to act out the lyrics. So that would be like basically my move. Down was a huge song. Still one of my favorite songs to this day. And I loved when Down came on, though, because Lil Wayne's verse is very like, down like you're supposed to be. She gets down low for me. Down like her temperature. It me she's zero degrees. She cold over freeze. I got that girl from overseas. Now she my Miss America. Now can I be your soldier, please? I'm fighting for this girl. on the. So I knew all the words, and I would have little dance, like act outs. So I would do act outs, basically is how I would dance. I could have finished the verse if you wanted, but I didn't, I didn't think you were. You didn't seem like you were liking it, so... It's like, all right, I'll cut, it. I'll cut this short. No, I was loving but it. But I would do, like, there's a lot of actionable lines in that. A lot of the songs, I would just try to find how I dance. So, like, maybe the fact that I'm, like, doing whatever is, like, comes from the shoulders. So there's two things. You dance with the you, you dance with the music or you dance with the lyrics? I dance there's, with the lyrics over the music, I would yeah, say, I for dance, the most part. I dance with the music. Yeah. Yeah. My way is a lot more hit or miss and takes a lot more prep. Yours, your way is a lot of prep. My way is you hear the you hear the beats and you can kind of hit the beat. And you just do times. yeah. You hit the beat a couple times. I, you know where I kind of did learn how to dance? Hitch. Hitch. The movie Hitch. Okay, I'm a fan of Hitch. Yeah, yeah. The movie Hitch. Cause and what? That's his big thing, right? He, he stay in your pocket. Stay in your pocket. Yeah, you pop yeah. Out, you know we what used I mean? to joke when my one friend would stay in. <laughs> Stay in the box. You got. You got to stay. Yeah, in the, he would. My friend would just always be in the box. But that's okay. You think that's the, a good? Yeah. If you're not going to be like a, a professional dancer or like be jumping in the middle of the circle, just stay in the box. Yeah, that's not a bad move. No, not a bad move. At all. At all. Robbie, what's up? 
the time has come to talk about it. I know that you haven't wanted to talk about this on the podcast. I was open up before um, about about crying with my father. Okay. And I don't mean to upset you on the podcast, but we should talk about this. Okay. What do you want to talk about? You have to get a new roommate. So. Oh, yeah. Not looking forward to that. You you have to get a new roommate. So Robbie's it's tough. Robbie's the person you live leaving. with, you see a lot. Robbie's roommate's leaving, so he has to get a new roommate. Correct. And this is something that you've been avoiding. Yeah, now it's the one month mark. It's the, you're one month away. You need to. And I start. need to start the process. So I'm I'm here for you. I told you. Yeah. I literally said whatever you need from I can help. However you want. Right. Oh, I'm not asking listeners to uh, be Robbie's roommates. No, no, no. Uh, but if you know someone you think I would tremendously get along with, feel free to DM me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I need to figure this out. Oh um, yeah, most people think we live together. Oh yeah, no, we don't live together. I do live with. I so I have two roommates. I have a nice apartment. Um, I don't want to leave because I have a ton of shit there, and it's just a pain in the ass to move everything. So I would like to figure out a way where I can stay. Beautiful. Okay. So now here we are. We haven't had real conversations about this. This is what's no. beautiful about the podcast. Now the real conversations about okay. this will come. Okay. What does a person look for in a roommate? Um, what do you look for in a roommate? I guess not annoying, doesn't smell. Okay, great. What? How is how is a roommate annoying? Right. I'll I'll give you an example. I could give many examples. Right. I, I'll say this: a roommate is annoying if every time you walk in a room, you have to say hello. Oh. Uh, I don't need a hello every moment that we're in the room. Today. Yes. A coexisting, cohabitating, you need moments that I could enter and not, I, 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 like, we don't even look at each other. Yeah. There needs to be a balance of hellos and no's. Yes. I would almost say that the, just like how music, the rests, the silences are just important as the notes. Yes. The no hellos to me are just as important as the hellos. I don't disagree at all. Great. They say the more comfortable you are with someone, the more comfortable you are in silence. Wow. Our car rides, literally, we must be the most comfortable people ever sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes I pick this kid up from his fucking apartment. And we don't say a word till we get to the, we get on mic. That's not true. Not a word. That's not true. All right. So what? what's annoying but to you about a roommate? What? Well, yeah, I what, mean, it's tough because I've lived with people that I really like for the past few years. Great. But um, what is annoying? Someone, yeah, that always wants to talk. Someone that doesn't have their own shit going on to me is like, I, I can't be this person. I, it's like, I can't make, I'm not trying to make a best friend. And sometimes it's like, all right, you see each other every day. Like that would be helpful. But then I go back and forth because when I moved to first moved to the city, I was 23 years old. My roommate was just turned 30 and we are very good friends. We became best friends. I would say when we lived together and we had a wonderful time together and we are still best friends to this day, I would say. So like, I don't want to be, Totally closed off to making a friend, but so maybe, in my ideal situation, I'm not making. It's just like. But here's the thing, Robbie. Did you hear what you just said? You're about to turn thirty. Yeah. Maybe you need a 23 year old to move you into your apartment. Yeah, I mean, maybe if a 23 year old wanted to move into my apartment, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Sure. Um, and I would try to. Yeah, I mean, it depends on my relationship with that person. It's just like, I want someone. Yeah, that has their own stuff going on. Someone that's not gonna be too loud. Somebody that's not gonna be too messy. And somebody who... But here's the thing. It's a balance, right? Um, you don't want someone that's going to be too loud in an apartment, but you also want someone that's occasionally going to be loud. What In a roommate, I look for an occasional mess. An occasional yeah, yeah. an occasional uh, night that you have out. I yeah, don't want yeah. a perfect roommate. No, no, no. Perfect. Once the standard is set that we don't ever, like, make some noise, we don't ever leave a dish in overnight, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. when things get bad. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's too tough to live in a situation like that, bro. Yeah. No, you don't want that either. You don't want that. Be it's hard to find someone with absolute with balance. Yeah. I mean, and that's when I read the Stoics, that's what, what they're looking for. Balance. Balance. I mean, yeah, ideally, I don't know. It's just going to be different because I've lived with people that I like know and love now since 2018, since my brother moved in. Did you love him before he moved in? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Me and my brother get along great. <laughs> I know. I'm fucking with you. Um, um, so it's just been a long time since I've had to like, and I've had a stranger roommate before. It was fine. I mean, I don't, I can't deal with an asshole either. Like, especially if someone's like super passionate about politics that I find like ridiculous or like just as an asshole to other people, that would be 
a very high on my like no i have a lot of like i can't deal with that things i feel like uh which is gonna that's why i'm stressed out yeah. because i don't i have a low tolerance for people that are going to be in my life so much bro people forget like if i don't love you and you're annoying fuck off yeah like people forget that math yeah if i don't love you and you're annoying fuck off yes like that's simple math for me yeah if i love you and you're annoying beautiful yeah beautiful but you get to know someone's annoying so fast when you live with them. Oh, 100%. And if I don't – that's why it's easy to move in with a friend sometimes, right? Yes. Um, Because if you move in with a friend, at least you love them and you could go, ah, but they're fun, you know? Yes. But if I don't love you and you you start doing a little annoying things, fuck off. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't. And it's tough to be annoying. I, I saw on Twitter yesterday this – somebody posted and they're like, I am annoying. I don't really pick up on social cues. I overshare Oof. and I like, I know this about myself and I'm conscious about it and I'm trying to fix it, but I can't control myself. Sometimes when I'm in front of another person, I overshare, I ask a lot of questions and I don't pick up on social cues. And then I'm like, yeah, that's annoying. And that is tough. Yeah. It's I, tough to be like, I'm annoying. I know it and I can't control it. And then all the comments were like, I struggle with this too. And it was just like a whole bunch of annoying people. Like what's and worse? I felt bad. I'm just like, I don't know. I agree that you are annoying. <laughs> what do you think is worse, to be ugly or annoying? I think annoying. I think annoying. Ugly, you can own, anybody can own looks any look, fade. I think. Looks yeah, fade. looks fade. You can annoying own Annoying gets worse with time. I know, it's tough. Have you ever met an old man that's annoying? Yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah, he does magic in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, my God. Bro, Jesus. Literally, an old man that is annoying yeah. has, is... You wish death upon someone. <laughs> like, it's you, tough. It's tough. It's, annoying is really tough yo, to shake. Annoying. I, the, the hardest part is they usually have a good heart and are nice. Well, it's impact so then it's over. Like, it's the thing. It's impact over intention. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what your fucking intentions are. Yes. If you're annoying and peop and you are coming from a place of love, but you suck because of that, yeah. it doesn't matter, man. You suck. Yeah. You suck. I know. It's truly like, and I don't care how many times you tell someone like, I didn't mean to. I was thinking this, yada, yada. Yeah. At a certain point, it doesn't fucking matter. No. My tolerance for annoying is just rapidly declining. And so it's yo, like. The older I get, the harder it is would be for me to find a, a, a roommate. Yeah, because also you lose as you as you raise in age, you're losing all good potentials that are going with uh, uh, people getting married. I know everyone's getting a partner. Everyone's getting another thing. I know you're getting older. Right. That's why your 30 year old friend was with you a 23 year old. Right. No. Yeah, exactly. because that was the reality. Yeah. It's like 100 percent. You have to start looking for a younger pool. Yeah. I. Yeah. And I mean, that's the matter of fact. That's the matter of fact. Those are the people that are moving to a city that need roommates. Because I'll um, tell you this. Because most 30-year-olds, I guess, are more established in their careers <laughs> or could yes. potentially afford rent. Which have a be... one-bedroom, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, one-bedrooms are so expensive in New York right now. Yeah. A one-bedroom right now is the, in New York is the most expensive it's ever been in the entire country. It's the number one highest rent in the entire country. A one-bedroom in New York City? $37,500. That's insane. Number two? 3750 Yeah. Uh, in New York, a one-bedroom is thirty-seven fifty right now. Yeah. The highest in the whole country. Number two, Boston. Yeah. Keep fucking trying, you losers. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it's Boston. 3000 Not San Francisco. It's tied with San Francisco. Okay, Both Boston, 3, San Francisco. Yo, but I feel like Boston just raised the rent so they could hang out yeah. with, with New York. You know with what New I mean? New York and San Francisco. Yo, I think, I think Boston saw those numbers and they got the mayor on the phone being like, yo, we got to compete with New York, you know? They're just biting on our style, left yeah. and right, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we got to raise the Which rent. Which is wild. Maybe uh, you know? giving more value would help people like your city more, Bro, obviously. We Boston, get fucking... Boston's so petty that I could see, like, the whole city be like, yeah, we'll raise our rent. We'll make it higher than New York just to screw them. Yeah. Do it, Boston. That I would screw... love that. Yeah, yeah. I would love that, yeah. What else was the top five? L.A.? Um, Yeah, number two, three, Boston, San Francisco. Number four, Miami. Okay. My that makes sense. Yeah, and then number five, San Jose, California. Wow, L.A. Where are you? Yeah, what's L.A. doing? I guess San everyone Diego. Owns. Everyone owns. I, no one's, That's true. No one's taking for rent. Everyone owns in L.A. What's the big thing you haven't made in this town until you own property? Who says that? I think it was in a real estate agent. Uh, 
uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, um, Quentin Tarantino makes a big. It's just so out of funny that. to me that Boston's number two because it's so like. Yeah. Like if LA was number two, you go, of course. Miami, number two, Chicago. of course. Chicago. It's just because Boston wants to be New York so bad. Just to be number two is just like, eh, I felt shitty about our rent prices until I saw that we were just beating Boston. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I've seen, I view it as, as us losing. I don't view us as us winning anything. That's a W we're in my We're just books. getting fucked over. Let me turn the Yankee hat around. That's yeah. a W in my books, Boston. <laughs> To spend forty thousand dollars a year on rent I mean, and insane. not be just putting that in somebody else's pocket is it, wild. It's insane. I mean, also when they say New York, here's the deal: there were five cities there, according to like all the census population shit. Um, uh, Brooklyn is the fourth biggest city in the United States if it wasn't a borough. Oh yeah, Brooklyn is massive. Brooklyn is the fourth biggest city in the United States if it wasn't a borough. That's why when people say where are you from, they say Brooklyn. Yes. They don't say New York. Yes. It's it's a fucking city in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like everyone like everyone that lives by St. Paul, Minnesota goes, oh, I live by St. Paul. Yeah, yeah. Right? We are so crowded in New York that we'll separate. We have to pick the boroughs oh, apart. Oh, I know. 100%. That, that's how big Brooklyn is. Brooklyn, yeah, would be the fourth biggest city in America. I mean, there's millions of people that live in Queens is also a massive place. I mean, people that from Queens rep Queens as like, oh, yeah, rep Queens. They My, my cousin knows percent. every celebrity that's come out of Queens. But He's he, like, that's Queens. Like, people from these boroughs know. from no. New York care. But here's the thing. I think Brooklyn's getting so big that people outside of the boroughs, outside of New York, outside the East Coast, when they hear Brooklyn, they think They know it, the – yeah, they think of Williamsburg yes. or – Lil Mo Mozzarella. <laughs> they think of those two things. They think of those two things. Two people that would never get along. Nope. <laughs> it's so funny when you think of Brooklyn, you either think of literally the most annoying finance bro that you've ever met that wants to be like a liberal fashionista or the biggest goomba in the world. Yeah. You know? Yes. There's no middle. Yes. Um, which this reminds well, me of something. Some people think of like fucking like, I don't know. There's a lot of things that you can think of. Go ahead. Uh, this reminds me of something. So... My cousin texted me this morning, and she's like, the new season of Real Housewives of New Jersey, one of the people on the show is lives in Sayreville, which is my hometown, Sayreville, New Jersey. And I go, I'm like, oh, shit, maybe I know her, housewife. She might have graduated a little earlier than me, whatever. So I go look it up, and she's from Staten Island, which she moved to New Jersey, I guess, 10 years ago when she had kids. Where I, Then I started thinking about it, and I'm like, there's actually a lot of celebrities that are from Staten Island that rep Jersey and claim Jersey, whereas you always think like everybody from Jersey just wants to rep New York. Where I'm like, there's a lot of people that are getting famous and like really repping Jersey that are from Staten Island that the Jersey Shore cast, these yeah. real housewives of New Jersey. This woman is all New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey now. She's from Staten Island. Can I tell you what happens? What happens? Those people gave up on their fucking dreams. She's a star on a TV show. Bro, those then people gave up on better. their dreams. She's starring she knew in a TV she could show. never get out of New York, so she went to Jersey. Jersey? I don't know the, the She dynamics. went to a safety school, bro. She went to a safety school. So you this, think Paulie D, or Paulie D's from Rhode Island, but the other guys that are on the Jersey Shore that are from Staten Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Situation, Vinny, yeah. Snooki, all of them Staten Island people. They, you think, were like, I give, I'm giving up on my dreams. I now must rep New Jersey. They just well, I, I mean, realistically, a couple things. New York has changed. Okay. New York has changed, and those type of people aren't really accepted in, in like the fantasy of what New York is. Okay. There was a time they period, could be. Bro, come on, who are you kidding? What do you mean? Who? Are you First kidding? of all, they could fit on at Staten Island. Yeah. And second of all, if they wanted to do, I mean, yeah, but this they, was a, the they world be was bigger changing. than Staten Island. They want a whole like they want a whole situation. Yeah, it's they can't do all New York. Okay. They wouldn't be accepted by all of New York, okay. right? Uh, so they go to Jersey where more people will accept them. That's what you think? Yes. You think New Jersey, I guess we're more accepting. Yeah, about yeah about yeah about some stuff. Yeah. Yeah, about, about some stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to go into what. Okay. About some stuff. What? It's, are you talking about politics? Yeah. I don't know how much the Jersey Shore people are super politically driven. Also, Jersey's liberal. I would say, for the most part. Depends. Some parts are, some parts aren't. Yeah. But same thing with New York. I think this Long Island, same thing with... I think the city is different, though. Yeah, some parts, some parts aren't. Yeah. But 
I guess it's more money focused. But I was just laughing because I'm like, you're always saying that every from Jer- from Jersey wants to put New York in the bio and all this. And I'm like, there's actually a decent amount of people, Staten Island people, that are now claiming Jersey. I think it's because these people hate New York. Which is funny. Yeah, they do. That's well, what it is. After COVID, day, I guess. But They hate New York and they go, let me go to Jersey. Yeah, I guess so. At the end of the day, which is great. Go. Yeah. Which I did find funny, though, she wasn't repping Sayreville. Every post she had from Sayreville was, like, her front door. Because I was trying to figure out where. Like, but she had the whole uh, Sayreville Little League and all the shit, whatever. And every time that she posted Sayreville, it just said New Jersey. Great. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I guess it's all one thing to you. It's all but one big spot. It was funny. I mean, I well, mean, maybe I'll watch the new season. Watch it. Yeah, maybe I'll watch it. I want to see it. if they, like, film in Sayreville. I don't know it. anything about the premise of the show. Do they hang out? Or is it like each individual person gets like 10 minutes in each episode? No, they... they it's like, like a collaborative... Yeah, they do yeah. it. They have storylines. Like, yeah, yeah. oh, can you believe this person and this person are beefing? Now let's have these two people go to lunch and talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It's just they're making up bullshit. They're making up drama and they're acting out drama until there's the final scene in the episode. They're all at a table and one person like flips out. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, I also do think... I don't think it's Good all teammate. political. I think it's also space and expensive. Yeah, traffic expensive and space on Staten Island is you can get way more in Jersey. That's why my parents, I mean, my dad's from Brooklyn, Staten Island, and then he moved to Jersey. A thousand percent. Your fa- your family followed the same uh, lineage. Maybe. Parents from Brooklyn moved to Staten Island. Your sister, baby's in Jersey. But look at me, babe. You're back in New York. Yeah, you're right. I'm back in New York. What are you talking? I mean, you're back. <laughs> what are you back talking? in Brooklyn? Back in Brooklyn. Back in Brooklyn. Back in Brooklyn. Right now, when people say where you're from, I say Brooklyn. That's. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm not. I was born in fucking. I was. You're born in Brooklyn. Now you live in Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn now. Yeah. Where'd you go to high school? Staten Island. That's but my. New anybody could have went to high school in Staten Island. That's what you could have lived in Bay Ridge and went to high school in Staten Island. But that's my new thing. Yeah, hundred percent. But now when, when people say that, I say Brooklyn. Yeah. I'm done being a Staten Island comedian. There's been a couple write ups about me and people say Staten Island comedian. I'm you want to be Brooklyn comedian? I'm done with that shit. Okay. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't need to fall into. Uh, well, because uh, anybody wants to either talk about Pete Davidson, yep. Colin Jost, or right wing politics. Yes. <laughs> and it's like I don't want to be necessarily like super linked to any of these. Whereas Brooklyn comedian, there's thousands of them. So thousands. it's like, all right, fuck it's just it. New York. I'm just yeah. I'm just gonna start saying New York. Yeah. Answer. Actually, I'll say Brooklyn because I like Brooklyn a lot. Me too. Brooklyn based. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right, Robbie. So let's just, uh, the whole point of today's episode for me. For, for me to you, it's to find your roommate. I mean, that's not going to happen today, no, but I would but love to find a, 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 someone I'll, I'll that like. I like. Okay. Yes. So I pulled up. When you go to college, you get like a list that you okay, fill out. A questionnaire. A questionnaire to figure out what type of roommate you want to live with. Okay. So I would like to fill that out with you. And then I'll. As I'll, a 30 year old. As a 30. What I'm looking for presently. What you're looking for presently. Amazing. Let's right? do it. Great. First question that isn't on here Do you care about. Does it have to be a guy? No. I've lived with a, a woman before, and I enjoyed it. I think it's nice. Great. So I would live with uh, so, a woman, a guy or girl, here's or the thing. anybody, like whatever you live gender. With the, you live with a person, a woman. You can't hook up with them, though, Robbie. For sure. Great. That is a. I have incredible self control, Sebastian. That's great. I have. I, I don't hook up with. I'm not you don't hook up, up with anyone. Yeah. So what? What am I fucking? Yeah, I could continue to not do that Beautiful. pretty easily. Great. I just think that like if you live with someone, if you start dating someone you live with, that no, shit goes not, zero to a hundred. Yeah. No. Like all of a all of a sudden it's like I've seen it happen. I went to college before, and you see people that start dating the first week. And I'm, I'm talking like, adults, bro. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking adults that move in together into an apartment and start dating. Yes. Because then all of a sudden it's like, why didn't you sleep in my bed last night? I don't know. I'm paying for my own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, all of a I have no. Becomes, okay. I'm not trying to find somebody to hook up with. Beautiful. I'm trying to find somebody that I like and what I don't know. Do you have a preference? Would you rather live with a guy or a guy? No preference. No preference. This is the first question, okay? You ready? Okay. What kind of relationship are you looking for in a roommate? To be everything together? <laughs> to be friends? To be respectful and peaceful and coexist? Um, I would say option three with, I would leave the door open for option two. Uh, option start. one is off the table. Option one. Yo, you can't. Option one is completely off the table. To move into my place and be like, great, now I found my person. 
Yeah. No. Now I found an extra fifteen hundred dollars to help me with rent. That's yes. That's more so than anything. Yes. yes. Um, Option. It should. I have start. a very strict criteria of like who's gonna become my best friend. Like I have a lot of friends. I don't need more best friends. Great. And if I'm gonna allow more people, I'm like I'm always down to make a new close friend for sure. But that criteria just increases as you get older. I would say. Great. So what? What you have to give an answer. I'm filling out this questionnaire for you. Uh. Let's go with three. I would probably fill out, but in my head, the door would be open for for two. But I don't. I would rather find someone. So if we're gonna get matched, that's what this is. The premise is. is I would rather be matched with someone who also chose coexist and friend. You know what I mean? Then like somebody who's looking for a friend. I don't really want that necessarily. If it happens, it happens naturally. But I I like option three. You know why you can't go from doing everything together to being respectful and peaceful to each other. Now that's an awkward yeah. situation. Yes, correct. That's yes. That's well, what was the middle one? To be friends. Friends, yeah. Even that. Even to go from to be friends to respectful, peaceful. To I'd rather build than have to take away. The expe- expectation start at zero. Well, that's, not zero, but coexist. That's also what's hard sometimes. Why people say don't live with your friends. Yes. Because if it bumps, the, if you get it gets complicated and stuff like that, and then you don't become friends anymore. Yeah. That's fucking awkward, man. Yeah, that is awkward. All right, let's go to the second question. Also, those people, I'm like, you must not know your friends that well. Like, I know how my friends live. Like, if I'm that close with you, I know you. I know how you live. I know your apartment looks like. It's like, you know. Bro, people people have shit that you don't know about when you live with them. I guess. Definitely. You got to do better deal diligence then. What, do you ask to sleep over a couple nights? No, but I would say anytime I've lived with a friend, they were within a 10% variance of what I expected. Question number two. Okay. Which statement best describes you? I am a morning person and prefer to live with a morning person. I'm a morning person and can live with a night person. I'm a night person and prefer to live with a night person. I'm a night person, prefer to live with a morning person. Uh, I'm a night person. Okay. What would I prefer? I mean, I don't know. It's tough to say you prefer a night person because night people are annoying. Morning people are annoying too, but night people are more, I would say, loose cannons. But night people yes. could have a breakdown at 2.45 a.m. I'm not having breakdowns at 2.45 a.m. If I am, they are silent. Like, a night person could just be like, I need to play video games now from 3 a.m. to 8 a.m. And they're loud and like, I'm a night person. I told you, I'm a night person. Yes. Um, whereas I think morning people are somewhat more respectful. I'm sure there are people that wake up in the morning and just clank pans and all this other shit and are the, the same, but. Here's the thing. A morning person is more accepted by society. Yes. It's harder for you to be like pissed about a blender at 10 a.m. That's true. It's it's you feel more irrational being upset about it. If with a night person you feel more licensed to be upset with behavior. Yeah. With the morning it's like, "Hey man, you know, you can't really uh you can't really be playing uh, music while you work in the morning, right?" Yeah. It's like, "Dude, it's 9:30. I wake up at 7." Yeah. Like, it's hard to, like, it's more socially acceptable to be a morning person. Also, good things happen in the morning. Yes. Well, good things happen in the morning. Good things happen at night. People like to be like, nothing good happens after midnight. Bullshit. No. Good shit happens after midnight all the time. I have so much fun. Sure. But I hate when people, I, better, to me, sometimes going out is bettering myself. And- Good. Th- people always say that shit. It makes me so annoyed. No the good happens after midnight. All right. Good things have happened to me after midnight. This is not true for everybody. I've had tons of fun after midnight. I've had more fun after midnight than you probably had all year. So let's. What's what do we want out of life? Do we want to go to Pilates? Sure. Pilates doesn't happen after midnight. Of course. But da- like, I've had so much fun at a diner till six a.m. with my friends, telling jo- I, you can have fun after midnight. Um. But anyways, I guess I would choose. Can you choose two, or you have to choose one? Robbie, you know I would press my luck and go night morning. Night okay with morning. I use my personal space for studying, relaxing, hanging out with friends, quiet contemplation. I plan on rarely using my space. Um, hanging out with friends. Great. That's what I would choose. Yeah. I would love for someone who says, I barely use my space. I mean, the ideal roommate is never there. Yes. Is commutes, has a job that is like a consulting job and they leave New York frequently. Okay, this is a good one. Okay. 
when dealing with conflicts, this is when we start getting the nitty gritty. All right, let's okay? do it. Let's get into the right? nitty gritty. This is why we talk about this stuff. Okay. Cool. And this is good because you'll go into a clearer mind with who you want. Correct. As a roommate now, right? This is good. Um, with dealing with conflicts, I am able to clearly express my feelings and concerns. I will generally express my concerns in a joking fashion so that the other person gets the hint. I usually wait until I am really annoyed or angry. I am not comfortable asserting myself in conflict. I would choose A, option A. What would you say for me? What would I say for you? Um, yeah, I, I also think it's good to pick your battles. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm thoughtful about yeah. what I'm bringing up. Like, it's all it comes in a thoughtful manner, I would say. I have a rule. Okay. If someone's like, if I'm with a roommate and someone, a roommate or anyone complains about something I did. Yeah. I never complain about something they did back. If that's a I'm good rule. If I'm with a partner and they say I did something shitty, I never say they did some, so another thing that's shitty. That's a good thing. Because it just dilutes, it makes me seem like a petty asshole and dilutes the thing I'm angry about. I'd rather hold on to that anger and bring it up another time. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Keep it like a supercharger. Yes. Yeah, I never dilute it. That's good. Have the conversation that's in front of you. Don't yes. then make it a two. Then you're having two conversations at once. And the likelihood of either issue getting fixed pretty much goes zero. down to zero. Once, yo, that's a huge red flag. If someone brings up a problem they have with you and they instantly bring up a, like the. Or you bring up a problem you have with them and then they instantly bring it back yes, up with you. Yeah, that's just like, all right, cool. Great, we're not solving shit. Th so then let's, this is what I would do in that situation. I would then make it fully about what they brought up. A thousand percent. And then it's like, all right, let's solve your issue first so then we can get to mine because I want to solve my issue and you seem to feel like your issue is is taking precedent. I would say I'm not comfortable asserting myself. I don't know. Depends. I Not I, not great, I would say. Me? <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'm not great. Things bubble over longer. Bro, and also like to let something bubble up only hurts you, man. Yeah, for sure. To let like those feelings bubble up, bro. And I do that. I let the fucking feelings bubble up and I'll be muttering to myself. And you ever catch yourself muttering and you're like, the only thing that's making me not a person, a, a, a crazy person is the, that I live in the apartment. Yeah. Like just muttering angry shit to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't like to hold that. That's why I like read the shit like to let go of stuff. I don't want to be the monk carrying the fucking woman up the mountain, right? Correct. I just want to carry her across the river. Listen to old episodes. You'll know. Yeah. Um, I always try to quote that allegory and I always butcher it. Really? Yeah, because I could use it so many times and I'm just like, eh, Sebastian knows it. You know what? I got a good one. Um, okay. So Plato. Okay. Plato got caught. Plato, the great philosopher, got caught masturbating in public. Okay. And the police came up to him and they go, hey, Plato, stop. Stop masturbating in public. And Plato looked at him, looked at the police officer and said, if only I could rub my stomach to ease my hunger pangs and then went back to jerking off. Now, that's how I know that Plato is more of a dude than a philosopher. <laughs> The, the guy was able to trick the police officer with philosophy so he could come. <laughs> Yo, Plato's actually my number one dude right Wait, now. Wait, so that he the cops were like, oh, yeah, good point. It's a good point. It is a good point. It's a great point. But, yo, this dude and they was, were like, oh, yeah, you're free to jerk off. You made a good point. <laughs> he made As a good point. As if you could just make a good point and then everything disappears. I mean, it was Plato. <laughs> fucking uh, yeah. Caesar loved Plato. You know okay. what I mean? All these people loved. Plato was a fucking gangster, bro. Yeah. Plato was so cool. Plato said uh, we got banished from Rome. They banished him from Rome. Oh, wow. And he, they said, we banish you to the countryside. And in response, he goes, and I banish you to the city. Yo, the dude was a gangster. He spun everything. Bro, he's inspirational. That sounds a little annoying. Yo, but I swear <laughs> to God. Imagine how cool that is. I guess. Every time you try to talk to somebody, they give you some weird philosophical joke. It's like, all right, man, I'm trying to just tell you not to jerk off on the street. Yeah, but like, <laughs> no, but also that's like I knew Plato was like, like Plato's like, oh. I'm I'm a man. I gotta jerk off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> was man fun, but Plato was Plato's my new dude. That's who I'm researching now. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, don't let shit bubble over. Uh, which statement best describes your preferred working environment? I prefer an uh, uh, environment that is quiet. I prefer an environment with some noise. I'm able to work regardless of the noise level. I must have some level of noise in order to work. 
If I'm working, I prefer quiet. Great. I mean, that's this is actually a wild question. Yeah. Imagine the person I can't, that's I'm like, not the person who can do music. I can only do I one can only sound do slip at a time. Knots. Yeah. I could only do. I did an experiment when I was younger that actually you work better with classical music and like stimulates the brain. Music without lyrics helps stimulate the brain. I've done that when yeah. like I was studying in college. That's when I used is. to work at J.P. Morgan, I would listen to podcasts, but I would be doing mindless work. So that would be just like to pass the time because I would be doing like things that I had That's done hundreds of like reports that I knew how to create that were just basically step-by-step -step processes. I consider myself shy, fairly shy, neutral, fairly outgoing, outgoing, outgoing quick with that one. I mean, what am I not? I'm outgoing. I'm shy. Sure. You can live in whatever world you want to live in. And I choose to live in the shy world. That's today. nice. Stop. Leave me alone. <laughs> Stop, Rob. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Why would you say I'm shy? I'm shy. What do you think I'm shy? I think you're the one that knows how to hang out. And I'm just here trying to hang. <laughs> Are you a smoker? Yes, I smoke daily. Yes, but I occasionally smoke. No, I do not smoke. I smoke weed every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would prefer a roommate that smokes, does not smoke, no preference. I would prefer a roommate that does not smoke cigarettes in the apartment. Other than that, you're good to do whatever you want. Okay, okay. If you want to smoke weed, we can smoke weed together. I, not necessary. I plan on going Also, out. back to the annoying thing. If you're annoying, then I'm not going to want to smoke weed. With you. Oh, yeah. God. I mean, annoying is tough. Annoying and mess and like dirty. Dirty. Dirty's worse than messy. Dirty's worse than messy. Annoying and dirty are the worst. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and, and mean. So annoying, dirty, mean are the no, no fly zone. It's a no fly zone. Absolutely no fly zone. I plan on going out every weekend, every other weekend, once a month, rarely, um, during breaks. Never. Um, now I probably go out two, three times a month. That's so, not bad. Yeah, which is crazy because I used to go out two, three times a week. Uh, but if somebody wants to go out every week, go out every week. I don't really give a fuck. I like to have my have music. Have fun in New York. It's a I great like city. I like to have music or TV on in my room all the time, most of the time, sometimes, rarely, never. Um, I mean, in the apartment, I play a lot of music. In my room, almost never. Almost never. Yeah. Yeah, when I'm in the a mood. Is, me and my three, my two roommates now, we all blast brown noise every night to go to sleep. Uh -huh. So, like, I live by a school, so there's – school starts at 7 a.m. and kids are screaming every day. Jesus. I forgot how much kids scream. Kids just love to scream. They're just – I don't know if they're just overwhelmed with excitement. Every single day, it is like, ah, screams, like piercing screams before school. And I'm just like, are they excited to just see their friends? It's not just like talking. If adults nah. are outside, it would just be talking. But this is just like piercing screams every single day. I love that. So, I which is that. cute. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, you forgot there's youth. It's like nice in a way. I was a kid. To be was. excited about stuff. You know what? Let them be excited. Too yeah. Many too many kids are told not to be excited. Yeah. Because those are their real feelings in the moment. Which is nice. I don't think this is a bad thing. Yo, do not I need to change feelings. not that. Not yes. That. So I put the brown noise. We all now do brown noise. That's good. Yeah. Which helps with each other. So it's like we, my roommate and I, sometimes I'm going to sleep and two hours later he's waking up. The one I share a room with who's leaving. So it's like, all right, yeah, we do the brown noise and it's been a great solution. Blast the brown noise. I like living in a very clean space, clean daily, clean space, clean weekly, messy space, indifferent. Uh, clean weekly. Yeah, weekly. I think clean daily. If someone's cleaning your apartment daily, that's an issue. That's kind of what's happening now. My apartment's very clean. But that's um, that's stressful. Which I to clean. Me. I try to clean every day. Like clean up after myself within twenty four hours. Yeah, but I think they're which talking. Deep I think clean. is deep cleans. No, once we don't do deep cleans every day. We do maybe a deep clean once a week, uh, which is great, but it has been like living with someone who's significantly cleaner than me. It's like, all right, I got to, maybe I should do 12 hours. Like I, if I have a can out 12 hours. I got to get rid of it. If I have a dish 12, like 12 yeah. hours is pretty much the, the limit that we run on now. My rule. And I think it's a good rule to live by with dishes. I, I don't make another meal until the dishes in the sink. Oh, that's done. good. Yeah. yeah I, I think, have a dishwasher too. So it's like, you have there's no excuse yo, to not bro, do 12 hours. If you hours. have a dishwasher, it's insane not to, to have dirty dishes. No, we don't. Yeah. We very rarely do. Like for me, it's just like, Hey, if I'm going to make more food, I have to have uh, a clean dishes. Yeah. 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 Um, this is one is very important to me. Okay. This one is probably the most important one out of so far to you. 
I prefer I prefer my room that is cold, fairly cold, fairly warm, warm. Oh, this is important. This is very important. Fairly cold, I would say. Fairly, I agree. Fairly cold is the optimal living temperature. So what is what do you think the optimal? If you could have the your living space set to one degree all the time, it never changes for the rest of your life. What would you choose? Sixty nine. Sixty nine. I mean, I want to say it's because I, I think it's hilarious, but it's just a no, mag- no, it's no, a no, magical, no. De- you know? Yeah. 68 maybe even. You would do 68. I'd probably go 70, 71. You in, know, the, in the winter, that's why. Because in the winter, I'll be like 70 is not enough because I'll come in from outside and I'll be cold in the winter. So I think 70. You'll be warm. You'll you be think warm. so? You warm up, man. Yo, I swear the other to God. Day I came home and I was cold and I'm like, what the fuck temperature is in here? And it was 70. So put I put it up to 71. Put a, put a hoodie on. Yeah, I guess. So I guess you're right. 60. Yo, I love a cold living environment. When I was in college, 65 degrees. I had my, I did not turn my air conditioning unit off the two years that I lived in my room because I lived in a frat, like not the frat house where we would throw parties, but I lived in a house with 12 dudes. People were up 24 hours a day, like Somebody was always up and rude. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep my fucking air conditioning on all the time for right. white noise. And I like it cold. So Me it was too. at 65 degrees right next to my bed. I slept well because it was so cold. Bro, I swear to God. My biggest pet peeve. I pick you up. You get in the car and you touch my fucking air conditioning. Oh, uh, people do that. I have, I've never done that. Dude. Dude. If someone gets in a fat man's car and touches his air conditioning, walk a mile in my body. Okay? <laughs> Literally. It's your car. At the it's end of my the day. car. You are getting a ride from you. Bro, I give you heads up on long trips. I go wear a sweatshirt. Yes. Because I not I don't play games. Yes. I need the cool environment. What about touching the radio? The radio is more on uh, for a fat man. The AC is number one. Ra- radio is number two, and whether it's in drive or reverse is number three. Okay. okay, like literally, you never touch a fat man's air conditioning. To quote Fat Chris Tucker, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you never do it. Yeah, it's truly the most ah fuck you. You know, it's the most uh, disrespectful thing you could do. Yeah, I mean, I don't do it. Take you my, told me f- from the first time. Take my daughter before you take my yeah. air conditioning. <laughs> I think the first time I ever got in a car of yours, you were like, just so you know, don't touch the air conditioning. Did I say that? I believe so, and I it's, never touched it since. Bro, I'm strong about it. You yeah, can tell not me. that I would. No, and I'm open to conversation yeah. about it. Like, it annoys me well, Yeah, when somebody starts futzing with... I'm like, I'm driving. I got to focus on driving. Don't futz with my situation. Totally. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I'm also somebody who notoriously would drive in silence. Also, oh, I wouldn't play the music. Yo. People would come in my car and be like, you don't listen to music? I'm like, no, I like to talk. Yeah, I like to you talk. You want to come in the car? I mean, I also, I could sit mood. in silence. If I'm going somewhere, I get amped for a. Yeah, like, it depends yeah. on, yeah. Like, if I'm going out, playing music is fun. Yeah. But, like, I like to chit chat. For me, also, a cold room, I, I, oh, God, heaven for me is a cold room with a warm woman. I mean, yeah, that's nice. Like and I'm that's warm, what babe. makes like ski trips cute like that. You've never you've never. I know, but I want to go. I'm like always thinking I would like to go. Like when I want a girlfriend most is like I came back from the ski trip. I'm like, oh, it would be nice to go with like a romantic interest because to do one of these off. things. Yeah, I do. Most of the trips I've ever done have been with my my guy friends. Oh god. So and it's like, oh yeah, it would be nice to one of these days go with. A, someone I could cuddle with, I guess. A cold room. <laughs> Eventually. A cold room with a warm person has to be one of those like simple pleasures in life. Definitely. It has to be one of those things. That, a nice like, fire. Is a fire. Yeah, it's cold. You light a fire. You snuggle up. What's my budget? I'm living in Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, like, <laughs> I when you go away. I mean, I better if you get go, out of the fucking bed. I thought we're playing pretend. I oh, I thought we were going more ideal situation, and I'm not allowed to have a fire in it. It was a, pl- it was right, a pretend wait, are situation. You, are you saying that this it's is a fantasy just that you as were realistic for you for me to have a woman in the bed as, as to have a fireplace in my room in Brooklyn? No, not in Brooklyn, just is in general. You, you go one of the greatest. Wow. I believe you said one of What do you think going to happen first, a fireplace in my room or a woman? Is that what you're saying? I think fire. Hey, we could do a fire tonight. I can't fireplace, promise a woman. We could go to Home Depot tonight, and we you could, could get, get a fire. fake fireplace and just put it right under that TV, baby. Oh, God. Get my feet I cozy. Know, I know somebody can get us a deal. Wow. Who does the fake fireplaces? They uh, He sells them. 
you get me a fake fireplace? I could get a deal on a fake fireplace. My Should friend that we... came to the Philly show sells fake fireplaces. What do you think could happen first? I have a girl over, you get me a fake fireplace. I think fake fire. I mean, you can have a girl <laughs> over. You girl over or a girl you... I mean, warm... Bo- what are we talking? I thought we were just talking ideal. Ideal. You could get a girl over tonight, too, if you needed. No, I... I, 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 I warm? I don't know. <laughs> she might be cold as she shit might to be me. cold. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like the cold. I kind of like a cold one. You li- do? I like a warm body, cold soul. <laughs> All right, final question, Robbie. All right, final question. Pick, uh, select your th- three to five concerns about your future roommates. Three to five concerns. I mean, this is what we've been going over the whole time. Annoying, dirty. Um, I guess annoying f- is such an umbrella. Eating your food is on here. Oh, lie- yeah, lying, stealing. Stealing. Oh, stealing. Stealing, wild. like To use your shit. Also, th- me and my current roommate have a great relationship, so it's like, oh, this other person is not going to have as strong of a friendship as me and my current other so roommate does. So that's that. No, which is not, but then it's just like, I don't. you don't want to leave that person out. It's like me and him already have a good dynamic. We've been friends for 15 years. Bro, Maybe you know, longer. You so it's what? like, all right, look, at the end of the day, you're not going to ha- be in this. No. Which is weird. No, it'll be fine. Yeah. What you need to really look for is trust, not annoying. Trust has to be number one. Yeah, trust. We haven't even brought that up the whole yeah, time. Yeah, trust. But because it's implied trust. Yeah. Trust has to be number one. Yes. That you could trust them not to fuck with your shit and to, to like, not take touch yeah, your shit. Yeah, my It'll information. Like, I talk. Yes. I'm like, there's things that can't be said to a general population. Beautiful. And it's like if you they hear me on the phone with somebody and they're like, oh, my roommate's doing that. It's like I don't need my business to now become this person's information. All of a sudden you're giving your bank info over the phone for no, some shit. No, not that. Yeah, oh. I mean you could be that. Yeah, doing yeah. That. yeah, you're right. It could be that. Like, I mean, yeah, trust, people could just fucking steal your yeah, bank. Yeah, trust has to be number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, We're yeah. For, for sure, right? for sure. Trust, I would say number two is annoying. Yeah. Number three is cleanliness. Yeah. Number four, if he's got connections for that ass. <laughs> Then it's like, all right, what can they provide? Yeah, yes. it would be nice if they could also add value in my life and somehow. Totally. Um, yeah, maybe they have a group of 20 friends that loves improv comedy shows. That's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have a ton of them coming up. Two, three, this Friday, 7.30 p.m. Oh, yeah. We'll be at the bitter end. Please come, come out to that. If you come and I cry, don't talk to me about it. Uh, don't two, even look at me. 2.24 is our show, so that'll be fully us. Please come out that uh, is you're directly supporting the podcast. You're directly supporting us. And we definitely need support. I started a new job, which we'll get into at a later episode, maybe next week. I'll start talking about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, we need we need your guys' support. The beanies is an incredible way to support us. It is cold. It is the winter. Now's the time to wear the beanies. They look great. If you get the beanies, take a picture, send it to us. Um, please, please continue to buy those beanies. And then if you're in the Vermont area or you want to get away from the city for the weekend, Burlington is so – it's cute. It's beautiful. The venue that we're going to be performing at is so nice. Like, I can't wait to go up. The owners are so nice. Um, I'm going to have such a good time. I'm very excited to go back to Vermont. Also, um, let me say this. And we're this. teaching – we're all teaching, us and Shannon. Let me say this. It's the longest time period that there's been no snowfall in New York City. Oh, wow. Vermont – it's gonna be packed with New Yorkers seeking for that snow. Uh, we we go up we go up to Vermont leaf peeping. No snows happening in New York. We're going up for snow. You know what tourism, I mean? Winter tourism, baby. We are going up to Vermont just to feel winter. Yeah. We I am so excited for Vermont just to feel winter. Us New Yorkers are walking around with t-shirts on. Yeah, I know it's fifty-eight degrees. It's or some fifty shit. something degrees today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go to Vermont to feel winter, and I'm excited. It's I gonna be go nice. Outside and go burr. Oh, oh. <laughs> Burlington. Oh, yes. <laughs> Beautiful, Robbie. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm excited. Beautiful. All right. Uh, call in for the V Day calls. Uh, please, I love please, that. please call in for Valentine's Day 929 900 6393. Talk about your crushes. Talk about your dates. Talk about your wife. Talk about your husband. Talk about your boyfriend. Talk about your girlfriend. Talk about when you got dumped. Whatever you want to talk about. We want to take those calls. Valentine's Day. 929 900 6393. Cool. Beautiful. All right, Robbie. Hit the fucking music.